ni ulienda okay wengi hawajui nilishabanduka kama shujaa si nilipata rufa chupa zia za hekalu zilisharuka kumbe hapa siri ni kuchangamuka sasa anga zangu chonjo ni natambaruka mimi niko na yesu nilijanjaruka kutoboa hii maisha ya mapanda shuka 5 6 7 8 Without further ado, I'd like to invite the EABC chairperson again to the stage. I'll be calling you up a lot, Jim. We're going to be spending time here together. So again, without further ado, please, if you can join me up on stage to introduce our guest of honor so we can get this show started. Uh, I'm sure you're enjoying your meal and uh, those who have uh, had it have enjoyed it. So we can have uh, our program start so that we... We don't spend a lot of time here. Some people want to see uh, Nairobi at night. Others want to, to go to the nightclubs. Uh, I've seen some making uh, asking which roads are very active. So let's not keep you here. My uh, duty today is uh, simple. Uh, I want to introduce to you one of our leaders the chairman of the Council of Ministers for East African, uh, the, the East African Ministers, East African Community Ministers. He's an elder from Jinja, where I also stay, so he's my senior. But uh, important to note that Honorable Chirunda Chive Jinja has been in the politics of Uganda, I think, Before half of you who are here were born. And uh, right from his university time, he started the struggle of uh, moving Uganda. At one time when we had Amin and uh, the other regimes, he had to run away. But he ran away to fight. He, he went away to fight and came back. And since then, he has been part and parcel of NRM government and now he's our minister, and not only minister, but deputy, second deputy prime minister. He was, he's the deputy to the chief who was here, and uh, I'm happy to say that he has served many capacities in the Ugandan government, different ministries, and he's the most senior and 
most qualified who can tell the Ugandan story or African story at large. So uh, amidst us is we have a deputy prime minister, we have a minister, we have a former head member of parliament, we have say it all uh, that is going to preside over our, the, this occasion. This occasion is a very important occasion in our, our EABC when we recognize those companies and associations and members who have prevailed out of the norm to do a bit more better and uh, serve our, 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 our East African country. So uh, I think with those few remarks, you know who is our chief guest. I don't know whether you want me to invite him now. Oh, he's going to make some remarks. So uh, today's uh, occasion is supposed to make some remarks. Uh, Today's dinner, and then we we'll continue giving the awards of excellency, uh, and then close after after that. It's now my pleasure and duty to invite you, sir, to come and make your remarks. And Chairman of the Business Council, and uh, all of you who are engaged in business, and the business means the trade, and the trade means uh, commodities and once you are at that level you make money so the people who have got the nose to smell where money can be made because you know each and every part of the body has got its job if somebody does something does not smell nice to you you will not look there and uh, you are a specialized group that has emerged out of the dreams of uh, the people who are not here, whom I represent. In other words, those who conceived the idea that it is only a free man that can think and uh, do more things for himself. So, I'm sorry the chairman introduced me as a, a politician. Politicians always worry about the next elections. But for us, we worry about the next generation. So I belong to that, and I was brought up as such. So today is not a speech day. We are only trying to enjoy ourselves and for me, when I was asked, I said, well, it is my duty to grace the occasion. Because, as he has told you, I appear to be the youngest person in the whole of this audience. <laughs> and a child is always the pleasure of a, in a home. If you don't have a child, then that home is miserable. So when God, because I also belonged to a group like you, we had also people who inspired us. You can see my dress. You can know who inspired me to be able to carry on this long journey, which Provident has left to me to be around. We are enjoying this uh, Kenyatta International Conference Center. None of you took part in its construction. No way are you bothered with the thing that unless we get free, these things will not be able to happen. They've happened, and when I preside over you, I find I get, I get a lot of pleasure and become more younger. So people have always asked me, what diet do you have? I said, I have got the diet. It has been hard, but of satisfaction, because I see 
my fruits completely unstoppable and they are going ahead. As a business uh, community, our, our job and our mission vision was a free and united Africa in our time. We could not achieve it. It has taken us quite a lot of time. But just recently, the people themselves, the leaders who take over the affairs of almost one billion people came and signed off without any, any coercion. That, okay, now we can, we can have a free trade area in the whole of Africa. This, so in other words, the scramble for Africa was actually a major step which was started in East Africa is now. So I saw your former chairman getting worried that there are challenges there. Hello, you are not there to go to, to Lord Wa. You think that he was there for a picnic? But things had to be done. In fact, a victory without obstacles is no victory. And if you say you have passed through so many, my political mentor, who is Jawaharlal Nehru, said that experience is what men give to their mistakes they have committed, the blunders in life, but have survived them. When you say that woman or that man is very experienced, he has, he has made so many blunders, but yet he was not put down by blunders. He survived them and is going ahead. So don't be scared. The East African Business Council has been the starting point. We are already a mile off. You are complaining that the other businessmen will not come because those are still, because this is a transition from a colonial economy to an independent economy by independent and free people. So they themselves have a problem, but fortunately, I am, I've survived to be able to preside over you that things can be overcome. And when I see my young man here who ventured into Uganda and turned an island into something nobody had ever thought about. Eh? He's growing a lot of farm. He has got a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, products from the factories and that those will require a bigger market. So I would advise you that also these small petty businesses where which after all you have no you have no word in participating in them. The colonial structure can no longer, we can no longer fit in it. And we must create our own. And that was our intention. You are in Kampala, in Nairobi. Do you know that when we struggled for independence, Nairobi was a well-knit city, but built for 80,000 Europeans. And they fitted there. But we did not say that, oh, how can we do this one? Even some people, some of our people challenged us. 
You ask for independence. When you even don't know how to make a safety pin to remove your jiggers from your feet, you leave these Europeans. But we said, no way. Eh? We shall make mistakes. And we even put up a slogan. It is better to rule ourselves badly than to be ruled properly by the imperialists. And all the things we have passed through, are our experience, experience can only be earned. It cannot be borrowed. If you fall, if you don't fall, how do you know that there is a pit? So, I want you to fall down, and you are risk takers after all. Eh? You are risk takers. Take risks. And the, the trade in between us will change because as the president, my president always talks, said people are complaining that there is imbalance of trade between Uganda and Kenya. Yes, because during the whole of the chaos, there was nothing in Uganda. And more or less, like the colonial arrangement, it was a captive market for Uganda. Even some industrialists shifted on the border of Busia so that they could do, produce things to move there. But as we are already recovering, I think the balance of trade is improving. And not only that, only one third of Kenya is arable. Three quarters of Uganda is arable. Now, if you go there and organize the maize, for example, and not to bring it in, 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 in uh, uh, as it comes from the garden, but you put up an industry, and then it comes this way. Everybody will not require to get any food relief from anywhere. So there's a lot of, of, of change, and we must be able to follow that. In Tanzania, they are also trying to grow rice. But some crook fellows can come under pass because, you know, non-tariff non barriers, as we are told. They are by those who somehow they had made a small cocoon where they were benefiting and they fear expansion. They don't know the benefit. And those who were told this morning by the Minister of Trade and also by the Prime Minister that also among our governments, there are also non-tariff barriers who think of, is it for good for Kenya? Is it good? Uh, where is our interest? Those are non-tariff barriers. And I want, I want to tell you that uh, some of us, Providence, has kept us around, and we still have some influence. We feel we are not only the legatees of the people who built, who created our independence in Africa, but we have been left behind to oversee you really take full advantage of this situation. So, as a, it is not a talking day, but just only to accompany and give you an appetizer so that whatever you have eaten is properly digested. And from here, I expect you to move with the full vigor to build East Africa, to build Africa, because nobody will do it. Yesterday, I made the people, the professors, <coughs> said <coughs> everything is, cannot be led 
by anybody who doesn't know. You need intellectual leadership in each and everything. So even in the business community, please look for people who can think and don't be confronted with the problems as if they are new. Let a group that think about the problems and find solutions. I said the greatest discoveries are discoveries of the ordinary. Some of you who might have gone to school, you heard of a person called Newton. But uh, what did he really discover? Did he discover rocket science? Only to see that the, the apple was falling down. Who has ever seen an apple falling upwards? But when, when he examined it, he laid the foundations of gravity and modern science. And I said, we are rich, but we don't know that we are rich. How? Because, for example, China, the, the figures were released when there was a, a, a big conference in South Africa that brought China, Russia, Brazil. That in that year alone, China sold to Africa goods worth $200 billion. But that is, is it goes without you knowing. All of you here, I told you this morning, I had to wake up at 6.30 so as to be here by 8 because of the traffic. And when I asked, I said, whose cars are these? Do you know that that is worth? Which means, and I ask, was it given by grants? People, when they come here, you get a, where you get a grant and you buy a car. They said, no, these were paid by. I said, eh, hello. So we have got a market. We have got the money because everything we have, we buy. If you do not have the money, you will not have bought them. Not only that, but we have, we have now been opened to what we want, and we know what we want. So, why do we want to be a market for others? Can't we think out ways to satisfy how many of us with our needs first? Can you exhaust that, uh, that demand? So the thing is in your hands. Don't ask government. Government only creates an atmosphere for you to act. But uh, and then I told them that, you see, some of you had got it wrong. Even the people who are supposed to think they line up to be seen by the politicians so as to be ministers. Hello. You think you should think? Eh? Do you really need? We have given you the, the whole of the continent. Play around with it. No, so the challenge is in your hands. Don't, hear to lament. Don't stay here to lament. Let's not agonize but organize. And once we do that, East Africa business, as we have already taken the best, we are already, already organized. There is no reason why we don't take the lead in African trade. So, I pray you and I pray to you that you have this stamina 
if you are true representative of the people of whom I cheered, unless you are not your children of other people. But if you are our children, then we expect you to play a bigger role in an open ground. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our guest of honor there. And can we just give him a round of applause for how well he is dressed as well. May he inspire all the men in the suits in the room. Now I'm going to invite, of course, again, Mr. Jim Kabehu, again. We'll be spending a lot of time, so we're going to get started right now. And of course, I'd also like to invite Liliana Winger, the executive director, as we start the show. EABC Past Chairpersons is our first category in terms of our recognition award. The EABC has had 20 years of great leadership steering the council to where it is today. And each of these leaders had their own mark and left their own mark. June 27 to September 27, from Uganda, the late Mr. Kasim Omar steered EABC. From 2016 to 2017, Mr. Oduse Ndayi I worked very hard earlier on the names, so bear with me if I mispronounce, from Burundi. 2015 to 2016 was Mr. Dennis Carrera from Rwanda. 2014 to 2015, Mr. Felix Mosha from Tanzania. 2013 to 2014 was Mr. Vimal Shah from Kenya. 2012 to 2013 was Honorable Gerald Se Ndaula from Uganda. 2011 to 2012 was Ms. Consolata Dayashimie from Burundi. 2009 to 2011, Mr. Faustin Mbundu, who hails from Rwanda. In 2008 to 2009, Dr. Reginald Mengi from Tanzania steered EABC. From 2007 to 2008, Mr. Aruni Devani from Kenya took over. From 2006 to 2007, Honorable Abid Alam from Uganda became the chairperson. From 2005 to 2006, Mr. Arnold Kileo from Tanzania. From 2004 to 2005, Mr. Hidji Shah from Kenya, who today will be represented by Mr. Andrew Haycott, the CEO of Mabati Rolling Mills. From 2003 to 2004, the late Mr. James Mulwana from Uganda. And 2002 to 2003, the late Mr. Elvis Musiba from Tanzania. 2001 to 2002 saw Mr. Wilfred Kiboro from Kenya take over at the helm. And between 2000 and 2001, the late Mr. James Mulwana from Uganda took over from Mr. Kiboro. Ambassador Juma Mwapachu from Tanzania took over from 1999 to 2000 and followed thereafter, of course, at the beginning of this amazing 20-year journey 1998 to 1999, you saw him earlier here, Dr. Manu Chandaria from Kenya. I'd like to invite Jim to come to the stage. Let's give these amazing men who dedicated their lives, time, and passion to this amazing council. And I'd like to please invite, if you heard your name and you're in the room, I'd like to invite you to the stage right now. I see Vimal Shah, he's in the room. I see Moshi. see Moshi is in the room. I love Mbundu, Mbundu is in the room. Carrera. Carrera is in the room. Odense is in the room. I know Consolata. them all. Consolata is in the room. Mr. Haycott's in the room. 